There he is, graduating from East Los Angeles College oh when he goodness. was 11 years 11. old. And he had a 4.0 GPA. Of course he did. <laughs> wow. The San Gabriel teen, also a best-selling author, plays the piano and take a look. Accomplished at martial arts. Please welcome Moshe Kai Kavalin. <laughs> welcome. We've never felt like less human beings right. sitting next to you. Like, really, what have we been doing with our life? Uh, w w when you look at what you've accomplished at your young age, um, I know you don't like the term genius, but what do you call yourself? Because you're obviously something special from the rest of us. Uh, I don't really see myself as uh, obviously as a genius or a prodigy because um, a lot of hard work went into what sort of what I am now. Mm -hmm. um, Thomas Edison has, has used his quote, Albert Einstein, that um, success is uh, essentially 1% uh, inspiration and 99% perspiration. Mm -hmm. And it's essentially the same thing in my case. It's 1% uh, parenting, sensational parenting, 99% hard work and, and uh, perspiration. Uh, so I, I'm just like really any other kid, but just you. I, I use my hard work in academics. You just named. Excel you just named a couple far. of geniuses, basically. No. <laughs> That's true. They're called geniuses, but you're the only 17-year-old I know that can refer to sensational parenting. At such, most 17-year-olds <laughs> hate their parents, but you you do credit them for, I guess, giving allowing you to really find out for yourself what you're interested in. You said they they kind of let you figure out besides school what you what you wanted to do yeah it's essentially they were responsible for finding that that perfect sweet spot sweet spot uh, between sort of the focused instruction and uh, discipline but not going as far as usual usual like Air Asian parenting with the tiger mom type of style but giving me uh, so much freedom into extracurricular activities you know the pilot's license I've been doing um, scuba diving the oh martial arts scuba and the uh, piano and all that, uh, just finding that sweet spot, you know, between discipline and, and freedom. So we found it funny because you do fly planes, but you don't drive yet, right? You, you, you still have not license. gotten your driver's license. Your uh, mom had no. to drive you yeah. to the studio here today. Yeah, uh, <laughs> technically, yeah, I can't drive solo. Oh my yeah. God! So you have someone pick you up and drop you off for work at NASA? Yes. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Really? Can, is the DMV watching? Is anyone? <laughs> but fly, but flying out? planes really comes to play with your job there at NASA, right? Tell us what you do for them. Uh, essentially, uh, I'm an uh, intern in the Flight Research uh, Center on Edwards Air Force Base, so I uh, deal with a lot of software, I debug a lot of, uh, I run a lot of simulations on the uh, software, which is sort of a replacement for the radar mm -hmm. uh, that the air traffic controllers use, so, and I'll end up testing a software by flying uh -huh. uh, the software up in, in, uh, in a Cessna. And what's the goal? Wow. Because you're also working with drones, right? And so, is this to try and prevent collisions or mid-air collisions between drones and, and planes? Uh, yes, exactly. The, the software started off, at least before I started making my contributions, it was to prevent drones from colliding into airliners. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of grown into sort of uh, general aviation because the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, uh, they're going to mandate uh, ADS-B uh, software, which is sort of the re replacement for a transponder. Um, and in 2020 is the mandate. So we're just trying to help uh, general aviation fly, you know, those who fly Cessnas to meet those requirements. Wow. Making now, the world safer. Do they come <laughs> to you, does NASA say, hey, there's this 15 year old who just graduated UCLA and uh, he's promising. How do, they, how do they find you? Or how did you find them? How did you get the gig? Uh, well, before I applied to uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which is NASA's uh, branch in Pasadena, right. uh, a couple years before, uh, but they rejected me for being too young due to my age. And uh, how, I, I how decided, old were you when you applied? Uh, 15. Oh. 14 or 15, yeah. And uh, I just thought I'd try again this time. And uh, thanks to the sort of um, foresight of my current mentor, uh, Ricardo Ortega, he sort of, um, if anything, he's the one that's sort of uh, brilliant as well because he's trying to. Um, cultivate my intuition, my mm -hmm. intuitive skills and all that in my current project. You talk about having a normal childhood, but you had anything but a normal childhood. You didn't do really you, have a childhood. You, right. Did you feel like you missed out? I mean, not going to school because you were homeschooled. School was just not for you. You had to go somewhere else to get your education. But in terms of just interacting with kids, doing the things that other kids do, and now, I mean, can you even relate to a 17-year-old 
out there today? I mean, you, you have 17-year-old friends. Well, I mean, definitely you can say that I relate with uh, sort of um, older, older mm. uh, people a lot more than those of my own age, but I do get uh, to interact with them through these extracurricular activities, uh, especially martial arts. One of my favorite things to do um, to sort of vent uh, everything out. And uh, I meet a lot of uh, kids with my age, and I deal with them regularly. I go to pr Christmas parties or these uh, get-togethers. Uh, this sort of dancing thing where I represented the, the, the Asian tale of the Monkey King. Mm -hmm. And so I get to deal, interact wow. a lot with those well, of my age, yeah. That's what I think is so special about you because it's not like you just have this one thing and you work for NASA and you don't do anything else. Because you have so many different talents in so many different areas, you've probably got to meet a huge, you know, mix of people through martial arts, I would think, and through um, all the other things that you do. Scuba diving. When did you get into scuba diving? Oh, that was um, scuba diving. Essentially, I wanted to explore because I was uh, fascinated uh, with the ocean as much as I was the sky. And um, I essentially, I don't know how I even saw it, like probably on TV or something mm -hmm. like that. And I was like, that, that looks very cool. I want to explore, you know, a different medium of the world, uh, the ocean, uh, and uh, see everything like the dolphins or even the wildlife, mm -hmm. you know. So what's the ultimate goal here? Uh, when you can be fully employed, I should say, you know, where you want to be employed. What do you want to do? Well, after I finish my master's, uh, what I'm working on right now in cybersecurity, uh, I'm applying to either PhD programs in computer science or uh, MBA programs. MIT is one of the schools I'm looking into. Um, I want to start my own business offering uh, something in cybersecurity. I haven't even decided yet, but that that's, looks to be the option right now. Wow. Well, <laughs> I mean... Congratulations. Keep exploring and keep it up because you are an inspiration to so many people out there, myself included. Yeah. My Moshe, goodness. thank you very much. Thanks for thank coming you. in today. And you have a book coming out soon. Oh, yes. Yeah. What's it called? Bully Down. Bully, Bully Down, Down, about right. bullying. Right. Yes. All right. What can he do? Thank you, and thank your mom for driving you here today. Yeah, thanks for the ride, <laughs> Mom. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> thank you. Give this guy a license already. Right? Come on. Yeah. Fly